All right, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up one more time for Mr. Da Hong Fei. Uh, I, I, I honestly, you know, when, when they call me, I truly understand when you did your research just now, because, um, you know, when the committee actually came up to me and asked me to MC for, you know, Blockonomic, and, I, and they were talking about blockchain, and the first thing that came into my mind is like, what is blockchain? Because <laughs> uh, as you guys know, uh, you know, working as an MC, uh, my crowd is actually a bit different, because <laughs> I do a lot of uh, hip hop, uh, you know, gigs, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's a bit like a wedding, so this is something new for me as well, but I'm slowly learning myself uh, into it. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed. And uh, for this one right here, uh, I would love, I would love to invite our next uh, keynote speaker, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, put your hands together for Ms. Zulera Abubakar, the CEO of Magic. Thank you, Blockonomics, for having me here today. Um, you know, having been a speaker, after all of these experts speaking before me, makes me feel like I'll be starting all of you from step one, right? Because it's I'm going to be speaking about the very basic stuff and probably also telling you about what we do at Magic. Now, um, my name is Zulaira, and I'm the CEO of the Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center. Um, we're not an expert, we're not a blockchain entity, for, for those of you who don't know much about us. We really are an um, ecosystem builder, I would think, right? So we build talent, we build entrepreneurs, we build startups, we drive innovation. That's what we do. Uh, we're a government agency, we're an extension of the government, but we operate very much like a private entity. Uh, so our job, like I said, is very much a ecosystem builder. Um, I will not have some slides with me, so you'll have no choice but to listen to me speak. <laughs> so thank you again, Blockonomics, for having me here today um, to have me speak on this keynote session. Uh, so blockchain, we're all here today, thanks to this uh, uh, group of uh, people known as the, by the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. You know, that's, that's my first introduction of blockchain. In fact, when it first, when this whole concept was introduced very, very many, many years ago, I asked myself, what is blockchain? Because I had no clue what blockchain was, just like each and every one of you in this room, I had to do my fair share of research as well. Um, so what is blockchain? I guess, the speakers before this made us understand that it's really a platform of exchange. It's really a platform that allows digital information that stores value, really. Any digital information that stores value to be exchanged through this platform, right? Um, it's distributed, but not to be copied, right? It's created the, the backbone of the new internet with associated blockchain with internet. I think it was an interesting stat that was brought up by OnChain, if I'm not mistaken, earlier, uh, which actually he mentioned that 35 million verified crypto users equates us to be in 1996 of the internet era. And it took us 22 years to achieve 4.3 billion in terms of internet, active internet users. So what it tells you is that we are associating blockchain with internet, and it is just a matter of time where blockchain becomes the internet. Uh, I tend to think it will be complementary to internet rather than taking over the internet. I could be wrong, maybe the experts can tell me so, but I think that it'll be complementary more than anything else. Now, three main properties of blockchain. If I can summarize all what all these uh, blockchain companies and experts were speaking before this, it's decentralization, transparency, immutability. Yeah. Now, 
like I said, I am no expert in blockchain. I am not going to provide any lecture here. I will leave you to all the sessions after this and prior to this. You've heard all of them speak and you will hear more after this. But what I can share is some stats, yeah? Now, ladies and gentlemen, according to some of the research that we've done, PwC, Global Glo Blockchain Survey, says 84% say that their organization uh, will have some form of involvement with blockchain technology in the US. And right after that, will be all over the world. Now, Gartner, which is also a research and advisory firm, basically forecasts that blockchain will generate an annual business revenue of more than three trillion by 2030, that's 10 years from now, right? So it is actually possible to imagine that 10 to 20% of global economic infrastructure will be running on blockchain-based systems by that time, this, by that time, yeah? So Gartner also found that 82% of reported blockchain use cases were in financial services in 2017. But that percentage dropped to 46% in 2018, right? Um, so what, what does it say? This basically says that the trends is actually moving from digital currencies, bitcoins, payments, debit cards, to other real use cases that doesn't necessarily involve transaction, right? It involves valuable digital data. So there are other applications to blockchain clearly. Now, the survey also indicated that financial services to be current to near-term future leader of blockchain, but also see potential in other industrial products such as energy, utilities, as well as healthcare. Now, an early center of gravity in the US and Europe obviously is shifting. It's now shifting to China. Right. In three to five years, China will be the leader. We're already seeing that, but the research and the survey just, confirm, just confirms that. Now, back to Malaysia. In Malaysia, blockchain is very much an emerging technology. It somewhat still remains a buzzword. We, st we have many companies that have started, but we don't have enough. That's the state of the Malaysian ecosystem right now, which is what we are trying to fix. We want to be able to, to develop, grow more blockchain companies. Yeah. We'd also like to see how the regulators can be involved in this and probably have a more meaningful conversation in making the blockchain industry thrive. Right. Now, um, we're seeing rise in discussions around blockchain as well as the mushrooming of startups, as I've just mentioned in this particular vertical. Through our global accelerator program, as well as our co-working spaces, we've got a, quite a number of them that are already working on blockchain technology solutions, right? And this, uh, we think, is bridging the gap from virtual to real world via game-changing technology involving the usage of distributed ledger tech for business solutions. Uh, so we've got a couple of companies. We've got Blocklime, I don't know if you've heard of them, uh, is a blockchain enabler based in Cyberdryer and they're actually skilled task force specialized in web and blockchain. We've got another company called Luxtag, Cindy Rambarhat, um, is a solution, a blockchain solution used to create temper-proof certificates of authenticity. Yeah. Well, we've also organized a hour-long interactive session with uh, ThinkBlink for participants to inquire about the application of blockchain and how it can benefit businesses, which drew quite a bit of a crowd. However, we do believe that it stems from the understanding of the technology. Like I said, you and I need to keep abreast in terms of the trends and understand what this technology is all about. People seem to have a preconceived notion that blockchain is all about cryptocurrency. There needs to be educational effort to help equip us Malaysians with a better understanding of the benefits of this technology.
Now, with the rise of blockchain solutions, there's also, there will also be rise in issues that may not necessarily be governed by any rules and regulations that are currently not in place. Having a thriving blockchain ecosystem here is the missing link in Malaysia, as I 